morning. We are having special music this morning in honor of a special anniversary for Jim and Ruby Larson. 50 years. Congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, that, uh, that's quite a feat <laughs> when the average is married for uh, what, eight years, so you've done well. You've done well, something that we all want to do sometime. Anyway, I was going to put on a shirt and a tie for you guys, but I thought about the temperature and the wind. You're important, but... <laughs> okay, they wanted an old standard. morning, I completely forgot to put my wireless on, so we'll start here, and we'll go from there. God created all things. We celebrate all that God created when we have. We celebrate the radical love of God that needs no sacrifice, that needs no blood, that needs no blood spilled, that puts humanity first. We confess our sin before God and one another. Creator of all things, we have failed to care for all that you have made. We have squandered resources and oppressed others. Forgive us for what we have done and have failed to do. Teach us how to be stewards of your creation with care and nurture. Amen. Our God will always love all that God has made. Although we sin, God forgives. 
Receive now the entire forgiveness of all your sins, granted as a gift from a loving God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Will you please gather in singing my Be Thou My Vision, number 776, in the Blue Book. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. God of radical love, we prevented Abraham from sacrificing his son for you. You showed him that you don't need a sacrifice to love or be loved. Remind us that you love us that deeply too.
first reading this morning comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 21 and 22, not the whole place. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son whom Sarah bore him. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and Abraham said, here I am. God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as burnt offering on one of the mountains that I will show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamp for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. This is the reading of the Lord. Will you please stand as we, um, as we say our affirmation? I
reading today is from John 1, verse 29. The next day, he, John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Please be seated. I invite the children who are here this time to come forward. And we're going um, to meet some puppets this morning. Good morning, Jill. Why not? Because teacher said we were going to take tests today, just to make my stomach hurt. So I'm going to skip the whole thing so I don't get sick. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Oh, but it is, Mom. Just think about all the trouble you're saving yourself. You won't have to come and pick me up early after I throw up all over the floor. That's a very smart thinking, Jill. Which is why I don't know why these tests should make your stomach hurt. You think about things, and you make good decisions, and I'm sure your teacher has prepared you for these tests. Well, sure, Mom. She's a very good teacher. And you're a very good mom. And Dad's a very good dad. Which is why I get so sick about tests. Jill, you'll need to explain, because I just don't understand. Oh, Mom, it's so simple. If I don't do perfect on all the tests, you and Dad and my teacher are going to be mad and sad and disappointed in me. I mean, what if I fail? Would you even still love me? I just can't take that risk. So I'm not going to school today. Now you get it? Sure. Now it makes sense to me. But let me see if I've got it straight, okay? You think that your dad and I and your teacher won't care about you anymore if you don't get all the answers correct, right? Good job, Mom. You get it now. Thanks. And instead of taking the risk that we won't love you if you're not perfect, you're just going to not participate in the test, right? Yes. You get extra credit for that answer. <laughs> I need to point something out. When you told me that you aren't going to school today, you were testing me. You wanted to know what I was going to say or do when you said that. Maybe you thought I would just say okay. <laughs> I knew that was very likely. You're right. But maybe you thought I would argue with you. I was prepared for that. If I had done either of those things, you would have passed, oh, have would I have test passed your test perfectly? No, you would not have passed. Would you still love me? Sure. But it would have been weird if you said okay. And frustrating if you would argue. But you did a good job. You passed. You even got extra credit. And now you know something about me that maybe you didn't know before or had forgotten. Like that I love you. And I know something about you, that tests make you sick. That's the whole point of tests. For the person who is giving the test and the person who takes the test to find out what they know and what they still need help on. So let's get this straight. My teacher gives me these tests to find out what I know and what I still need to learn, right? 
Yeah. Yep, again. Well, I better go to school then. I wouldn't want my teacher to do that on my test just because I wasn't there to take it. You are a very thoughtful student, Jill. Well, isn't that wonderful? What a great story. How do you feel about tests? love the idea of God testing. Never really have. It's always kind of made my stomach clench a little bit and my teeth kind of get on edge and a little tense and headache, the whole idea that God tests us. Because I don't like tests, and I never have. And they make me nervous. And what if you fail me? What if I don't get it right? What if and those big questions, those big if questions, and they can be they can be kind of intimidating. They can make you want to not do anything. They can make it so that you're paralyzed. And so you decide, well, if I'm not gonna, if I if I take this test and I don't do well. I take on this project and I don't do well, then I will have failed. I will have not done what people expected of me. So I'm just not going to participate. I'm not going to do the project. I'm not going to do the test. I'm not going to do the project. I'm not going to volunteer to help. I'm just going to go about my day as and making as few waves in the world as possible. Because I don't want to disappoint. I don't want to fail. And I can't do I can't do that with God. None of us can do that with God. So God tests. And perhaps we need to reimagine what that must be like for God to test us yet today. We know the story of Abraham and Sarah. We've learned it since we were children. They're old. Abraham, Sarah is um, barren. She can't have children. They have no children in their life. And then God comes to visit Abraham and says, I'm going to make you the father of a great nation. <clears throat> and Sarah laughs. And God tests. And they wait, and they wait, and they wait. And while they wait, Abraham makes some really weird decisions, like lying about his relationship with his wife so that the nation that they're going to, the leaders, don't, don't kick him out. It's weird, weird. And then, our, and then we find that Abraham can't argue with God because God was going to destroy everybody in Sodom and Gomorrah, and Abraham argued with God. So we know he can do it. We know he's done it before. And then there were other things that 
through Abraham's story, before Isaac is born, that show us the nature of Abraham and show us the nature of God. God tests Abraham, Abraham tests God. And now, we're at the final, the final test, the big one. Because the child has been born, God has kept his promises. He has provided the son who will be the father of all nations, that will make Abraham the father of all nations. And what does God do? <clears throat> he asks Abraham to, to sacrifice him. This is the test. Now, since we know that Abraham knows how to argue with God and has done it before, I'm very curious as to why Abraham did not argue with God when God said, take Isaac to sacrifice him. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you have argued with God about taking your child to sacrifice him? I would have argued. I also may have just said no. No, we're done talking about this. I'm not going to do it. What if Abraham had just said no? We do that. God puts it in our heart to do something hard. And sometimes we just say, no. No, I'm not going to do it. It's too hard. I can't take the risk that I will fail. Abraham could have said no and said, I'm not going to take the risk that this child, this child, this gift that God has given me will be gone and I will no longer be a father, not just of Isaac, but of whole nations. But that is not what Abraham did. Abraham chose to listen, to do the hard thing, to take his son up a steep mountain, to offer him up as a sacrifice. A hard, hard thing. And then remember what God said? Stop. Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for now I know, I know that you fear God. See, God doesn't test just to be hungry, to see how well we can do, to see how bad we can fail. God tests so that God can learn what we are able to do, what we are willing to do for God's will to be done. And even if Abraham had said no, and even if we say no, because it's too hard, we know that God will stay with us. God will provide what needs to be done in our lives so that we can turn and say yes, I will do that hard thing. God will provide. See, this is just as much a test of God as it is of Abraham. Will God remain faithful to the one that he chose? And God did. He provided. He provided a sacrifice other than Isaac. And God will provide what you need to be able to do that hard thing that has been laying in your heart, that God has been niggling you to do, he will provide. And you can argue. God always loves a good argument, I think. You can argue, and God will argue back. You can say no, and God will redirect. God will teach. Because isn't that the point of a test? Isn't it? To know what you know, to find out what you don't know, for the tester to look at you and say, oh, good job, you know this much, you trust me this much. And then to find out yet where we need help. <coughs> you know what the most <coughs> life-giving thing about this story is, this whole all of these passages together is that God knew what we needed. 
God, you don't make me give a lamb. And John the Baptist says, Behold, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. See, God looks at us with love and grace and mercy and says, Look, there's no way you're going to pass the test. There's no way you're going to make it. You know, there's no way that you're going to do my will for this world without help. <clears throat> and so he gave us the help that we need to have the faith that we need to do the things that God is asking us to do in this world. He gave us himself. He gave us Jesus Christ. And he did the most wonderful, powerful, awesome thing that we should behold with, with awe. He defeated death. He made it possible for us to keep going when everything feels like it's too much. Because when Jesus came, when God came to us as Jesus Christ, God gave us all that we need to do the will of God. Do you know that in the Lord's Prayer we pray, Thy will be done. And lead us not into temptation. Those two things, sometimes they don't go together very well. We want God's will to be done. We pray that in this prayer, but then again, we don't want God's will to be done because it might be too hard for us to do. It might be too hard for us to face. And so when we say those words, thy will be done, we need to say them with awe and trembling and fear because do we really want that? Are we really ready to know what that is? And that is a test. That is the test that God gives us. Do you really want the will of God to be done in your life in this world? Do we want it? I mean, it means that we have to give up something. It means we have to sacrifice something. We have to sacrifice our will. I don't know if I'm ever ready to do I'm always ready to do that. When we pray, lead us not into temptation. We are asking that God should not put us in such a testing situation where we are driven to choose, to decide, or to risk what we confess our faith to be. God tests. Satan tests. We need to get that right. It is my prayer for all of us that this week as we go about doing things that we do in our daily life, learning, teaching, greeting, and resting, celebrating, and working, that we would recognize God in the decisions that we make that we would be willing to take the risk to be Abraham, to be willing to fail, to lose, to know what God's will is. And then to joyfully and fearfully and with trembling put ourselves in God's hands with faith, knowing that God is merciful, God is gracious, and God is love. I pray this for all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you please join in singing number 746 in the blue book?
the stand as you are able, and we will profess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, be with you all. Will you please share a word of peace with each other, however you are comfortable? surplus when it's convenient and hope that it is enough. Teach us to give with open, wide open hearts that risk rather than protective stinginess cloaked in a flimsy assurance of security. Faithful God, hear our prayer. Loving Creator, you do not ask that we slaughter animals to appease you, but rather that we responsibly steward all the riches and resources of your creation. Forgive our missteps and help show us how we can be part of healing this beautiful but wounded planet. Faithful God, hear our prayer. Lord, there are many in this world who suffer from the threat of abuse and maltreatment by those more powerful than themselves. Shepherd them with your love. Lead them to rescue 
and use all of us to bring about a society where such crime is neither persistent nor tolerated. Faithful God, hear our prayer. Lord, your presence is balm to those who suffer illnesses or long for wholeness. Feed them on your promises and surround them with your healing, especially those we name in our hearts today. Father, your faithful God, hear our prayer. For all your faithful children who have gone before to pave the way so that we might worship without fear of persecution, we give you thanks. Shine your light ever before us as we strive to continually follow you. Faithful God, hear our prayer. Your word is life and your promises are real. O oh God, sustain us and use us as the living answers to our own prayers, strengthening us by your Spirit and drawing us close to your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We have many uh, announcements for parish time. Um, I just want to let you know that the Fall Festival um, was a success. We had a good turnout. The meal was wonderful. 
gifts that you shared with this congregation were wonderful, were awesome. Um, and we raised over $6,000. Oh, thank you. Um, Sunday school starts today. Um, we'll have fellowship time. Make sure that you stay for coffee and treats and a cake or two. I will be in here for the next few days for this. Uh, Sin and Fall Theological Conference. We leave this afternoon and I'll be back on Tuesday. So I will need a uh, host for the um, food pantry for Tuesday from 4 to 6. If anybody can help, please let me know. Um, quilters are quilting this week on Wednesday and Thursday. I want to remind you that you do not have to know how to sew or how to quilt to join in the fun. There's lots of other things that you that can be done, so please. Um, Lou Ann, what time do you start? Uh, about 9.30. About 9.30, and you just work until you're ready to be done, and it's still bring your own lunch? Yes. Okay, bring your own lunch. Um, Wednesday afternoon, Kids Connection, um, Kids Connecting Through Christ will meet here after school, and we're done, I believe we're planning to be done about 4.30, 4.15? So, um, all the preschool group fifth grade kids are welcome to attend. Um, if you know of any children in the neighborhood, in your neighborhood, please make sure that they are aware and they are welcome to, to come and, and hang out with us and play. Wednesday evening youth group will be here at 8.30 p.m. All high school youth are welcome to attend. Friday, from noon to three, the quilters will be hosting a barbecue and pie lunch um, in celebration of homecoming day, I believe. So, um, if you have no lunch plans for Friday, come and have a barbecue. They're always really good. And of course, the pie, how could you not want a piece? Ken Luke, he had a birthday. Ari Voss had a birthday. Hazel Hahn will have a birthday. The flowers are in honor of her from uh, her sister, LeBay. The card is still on the table. Um, if you haven't signed Hazel's birthday card, please do so, and I will um, mail it tomorrow. She's going to be 103 years old on Tuesday. So that is a celebration. And we have anniversaries. We have Jim and Ruby's 50th anniversary. Marlis and Curtis' anniversary is coming up. I don't know how many years. Are you going to tell me? <sighs> Seventy years of marriage. It's been a long time. <laughs> and you're still walking. <laughs> Absolutely. So happy anniversary to both of you, to all of you. Um, I think Perhaps that means that we need to sing. I'm not really sure how to go about it. We're going to sing Happy Birthday, and all of you, you guys who are having anniversaries, just know that that's for you too. <laughs> <laughs>
and we will sing our sending song number 781 in the blue book. Yeah. Thank you. 